Did the mother of God reach out to Tom Holland? Some days he, he answers that question with a yes. Other days he answers that question with unbelief, with a question mark. But let, let's hear what he has to say about that testimony. It's quite interesting and it has to do with his faith journey. Tom, that's so interesting. And you've talked there about the influence that Christianity has had on our culture, on Western culture. Um, you talk about the way humanism is entirely based as a construct on the Christian tradition in the West. I want to ask you a personal question and you of course are at total liberty to just sidestep it if you want. <laughs> but the question that I have is to what extent are you an observer or participant in all of this? So you appear in Justin's book. Yeah. We've heard about the episode that you were on with AC Grayling. Um, but to what extent are you part of the phenomenon that Justin describes or are you also observing what is going on? I, th I think that it would be merely cosplaying, <laughs> were it not for the fact that I had um, a couple of experiences that I can, if I squint in a certain way, <laughs> see as being a, a, a supernatural, a, a, a contact with the supernatural. So the first of these was um, I made a film about um, why the Islamic State were persecuting um, the Yazidis and the Christians, the way that they were persecuting them. And as part of that, I went to a town called Sinjar in uh, northern Iraq that had been occupied by the Islamic State. And they had, um, notoriously, they had executed uh, the Yazidi men who they saw as being devil worshippers and crucified some of them in this town. And they had uh, enslaved the, the younger women and, and shot the older ones. Um, and we, we went to film in this town uh, a couple of weeks after it had been liberated by the Kurdish militia from the Islamic State. But the Islamic State was still very much kind of across no man's land, about two miles away, across open desert. So I, I'm not a brave person. And if I'd known that this was on the agenda when I went to, to, to make this film, I wouldn't have gone. Mm. But because we got there and we unexpectedly had this opportunity to go to the town and the director and the, the cameraman, everyone was going, brilliant, this is so exciting, isn't it? <laughs> Fabulous. And I was kind of wanly going, oh, great. <laughs> um, so we, went, we ended up in this place uh, and the kind of the, it was incredibly hot. There was a kind of stench of death hanging over it. There was ruins everywhere. There were you know, trip wires and bombs and uh, you know, it was awful. And my, I, the admiration I feel for war correspondents who keep going back to these kind of places over and over is off the scale because I will never go back to somewhere like that. But there was a church and we went to this church. It had been built by Armenian refugees from the genocide um, in the Ottoman Empire. And then they'd come here and then uh, fresh genocidal enemies had turned up. So they've had a very bad run. And in this church, they, uh, the Islamic State fighters had demolished the altar with power drills and they had toppled over the font and they had pulled down all the icons and smashed them and jumped up and down on them. And I saw, amid all the kind of the rubble and the broken glass, there was this um, kind of piece of, of paper, uh, of, of uh, card that had, had been left. And I picked it up and it was a picture of the Annunciation. Um, so the great wings of Gabriel sweeping backwards as he knelt before the Virgin. And I felt that I could, I felt it was a kind of one of those thin places that people talk about where the dimension of the heavenly suddenly seems incredibly close. I don't know if I'm allowed to talk in this vein in a, mm. in a congregationalist church, but, <laughs> but, but um, it's going to get worse. I can tell you. Um, I, but but it, it felt incredibly vivid mm. and I kept that, 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 that image and I was in a place where people had been crucified and a sense of what that meant to be, you know, two miles away, to have people who had thought as the Romans had thought that execution and crucifixion were ways of upholding their power, that that's the power, that's the signification the cross had for these people, not as a symbol of the power of the weak over the strong, but the opposite, the power of the strong over the weak. And it was, you know, it was a kind of existentialist abyss 
opened up before me. And so I think I was, for that reason, very open to the sense of angels' wings brushing overhead in this desecrated church. I mean, I was dehydrated. I was in a mess. <laughs> I, I mean, I can come up with all kinds of Dawkins-esque reasons why I felt like this. But it was a very vivid, real feeling to me, and I kind of cherish it. And then, you know, and I kind of put this image away uh, and kind of, you know, it, it, it was a kind of souvenir of my trip, um, but not really much more. And I did think, well, it was all just dehydration and, and exhaustion. Um, and then I, uh, as part of um, uh, my church tourism, I went to St. <laughs> Bartholomew the Great, which is um, a part of a priory that was built at 901 years ago this year. Um, the hospital was also a part of it, which still exists. Um, so it's very old, medieval, so I went there. Um, and this is supposedly the only place that the Virgin appeared in London, recorded appearance of the Virgin. And she turned up in the 12th century to tell off the monks who'd got the liturgy wrong. <laughs> so it was kind of a very bossy appearance. Um, but I like that. I, and it was also the place where Benjamin Franklin, so in the Lady Chapel, when the, the Lady Chapel got built in the wake of this manifestation and then got sold off, um, with the Reformation, and it became a, a, a radical printer's office, and Benjamin Franklin worked there. So this church is the only place where both the Virgin and Benjamin Franklin had appeared. <laughs> and it seemed to me the embodiment of everything that I was writing about in Dominion. Um, so I, 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 found, I found the services there very, very powerful and moving, and they're very, kind of very high church, so they're kind of the opposite of this, I guess. Um, but I... I I found them very, very moving, very sublime, and so I went to that. And um, then, it, in the, the, the COVID outbreak, the last one, the Omicron spike, which I think was just before Christmas, was it 21? I can't remember. Yes, I think it was Christmas 21. I had um, a bowel cancer diagnosis right in the midst of the Omicron spike. So the, the hospital was absolutely being overwhelmed. And I went in and I had the endoscopy and the surgeon said, well, it doesn't look good. I mean, it, you know, it might have spread. Um, it might have gone into your lymph nodes. So we're going to send you off for scans. Um, but I think basically looking at it, I think that we're going to have to cut out a huge chunk of your bowel, um, give you a colostomy bag and then stitch it back together again in six weeks. And, and that should get rid of the cancer, unless it's spread to the lymph nodes, but we'll find out about that. We'll let you know before Christmas Eve. And um, Christmas Eve came and, and there was no, you know, they didn't tell me. And I, I, I in no way blame them because I knew that they were overwhelmed. I mean, it was the worst kind of time to be having this kind of treatment. And so, but I felt kind of, oh, Lordy. Um, so I went to, to Midnight Mass at Bart's that um, Christmas Eve and at the end of the service, I looked over to where the Virgin had appeared, and I thought, well, <laughs> I might as well give it a go. <laughs> you know, there's, there's, no, there's no atheist in a foxhole. What have I got to lose? So I went, and I haven't prayed. I mean, I haven't, I, I, you know, when I was young, and I thought, I've got to pray for everyone, or, or, they get, or they'll die. And I, I remember that kind of nervousness as a seven-year-old, thinking, who have I left off? What, oh, I don't want them to die. And I hadn't really prayed since then. But I went to this place where the Virgin had appeared, and I gave a heartfelt prayer. You know, come on, please. And all kinds of things went right from that, that point on. And I, I won't go into the details, but basically, I kind of, I, it seemed miraculous that in the most unexpected way, I, I, I not only got access to the photos, which told me that I didn't have cancer in the lymph nodes, but also I, I found out that I didn't have cancer, the cancer hadn't spread from the polyp, and that therefore I didn't need to have this chunk of the gut removed. And um, two years on, I, I, I seem clear of it. So I dodged a massive, massive bullet there. Um, and again, I, I, you know, I, I, the perfectly rational reasons how this happened, but it was so unexpected, and I don't want to go into the details of it, but they, were, they required so many coincidences that I have been tempted to see it as miraculous. And I, I, 
I told this story to um, a, a well-known Australian singer, who I think may even be in this audience here, I'm not sure, and, and said, you know, I, I, obviously it is a coincidence, but I feel ungrateful to the Virgin for saying that. And he said, well, yeah, I think you are being ungrateful. And I felt school <laughs> and started to think, well, you know, have I had a Marian visitation? And then I started thinking about that, um, that, that piece of, you know, that image of the Annunciation and thinking, had I focused, was I wrong when I focused on the angel? Was I actually focusing on, should I have actually focused on the Virgin? Was, you know, was, was she there? And as a, a Protestant agnostic, the idea <laughs> that I had had a Marian, a Marian intervention seemed to me so sublimely funny. <laughs> And I thought, well, I mean, if it's true, God has the most wonderful sense of humor. <laughs> and I, I kind of like the idea of a God with that kind of sense of humor. And I, I hug to myself the thought that I have had, I have, I've been touched by something that utterly transcends every prejudice that I would have against the possibility of it happening. That's, that's you know, not just that it is supernatural, but that it is, I, I mean, essentially kind of medieval, Catholic, I mean, everything that I would view myself as not being. Mm. <laughs> and God, so funny. I mean, you know, what a, what a, what a, what a trick to pull. Um, and so I, 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 I am, I'm in a kind of liminal space where there are times where I think, Amazing. I, I have, you know, I, I, I look at this image and think, wow. And then there are other times where I just think, wow, you know, I was, it, it's all just coincidence and, and, and madness. And I think about deep space and dinosaurs and it all goes. <laughs> but it so if you have heard him uh, speak about his faith or lack of it before, you will know that one reason he gave for his struggling uh, with belief is that it seems so pointless or meaningless that uh, you know the space is so vast and uh, the earth is so old so i know for me or for many others that that doesn't seem to be a hindrance let's say why why would you see it in that way but anyway for him it's it's a thought he kind of returns to that um hinders him from from taking that leap let's say uh, that step over to the uh, realm of faith i find this story really uh, intriguing and interesting because for a person that struggles with faith because the the universe is so vast it's interesting that he experienced um the presence of god through something very particular and in the here and now i think what tom holland perhaps will see or maybe he sees it already but i think he will at least see it um one day is that it's precisely that um, that God is in every moment uh, that God can reach out in the particular that for the Greeks uh, they they reached God through th uh, through thought through cont contemplation. Um, but in Christianity, God visits man. He's, there is a person here, right? Uh, God is uh, visiting Abraham and talks to him. And ultimately, he comes down to earth uh, in the incarnation and in the person of Christ. So this triune triune god is connected to us and relates to us primarily 
through his actions and or energies towards us, and in particular through the incarnation. I think that for Tom Holland, um, perhaps he was thinking that one day, if he will believe, it must come uh, through a way uh, through the answering of a question and the question is why what does the uh, universe seem so vast uh, and uh, empty and how about the 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 millions of years um that have passed um since the earth was created what do we do about that? It seems like we are just a, a very insignificant in the totality of that history and vastness. But I think God uh, is kind of reaching out to him, perhaps, not by answering that question, but showing that it's precisely because of the vastness of the universe that we understand the uniqueness of the earth and on the earth the uniqueness of man and the love he has for us in particular. And it is through the particular, it is through the incarnation of Christ that, this, that the church is establishes, established and grows Um and eventually encompasses the totality of that universe. But it's, I, it, it's, it's kind of, um, you know, those, those kind of visual things where it's, it's, what is it, it's either a rabbit or a duck, depending on, and you, it's impossible for it to be both at the same time. And I kind of feel like that, that sometimes it looks like a duck and sometimes it looks like, like, a, a, like a hare. And uh, um, I'm kind of midway, um, so... I think the topic of the Virgin Mary and why uh, and the difficulty this let's say um, testimony uh, the difficulty by which a Protestant would uh, have to deal with it or or uh, someone open to it like uh, uh, Justin Riley but other protestants will feel like uh, this can't happen i think i think what we really are dealing with there is the scandal of the incarnation that is the scandal of theosis we even if we profess that we are christians we really can't grasp the fact that god has made us almost as gods, that is, gods without the nature of God. Um, think of uh, the prophet uh, Elias um, uh, doing all the miracles, or Moses glowing so much that people need, need to cover their eyes and heads. Um, or the shadow of Peter that heals uh, a person. So I think, in a sense, uh, it this <laughs> the, the scandal or the question Tom Holland has is about the vastness of the universe, and the scandal or or. Uh, or for, for the Protestant is really the same thing that is seeing the church and the, the process of making everything Christ actually playing out in reality and in the lives of uh, the people.